It was Good Friday, a day of somber reflection for millions of Americans. It was cloudy but unseasonably warm for late March. It was mid-afternoon. I had the day off, as did my father, who spent his day doing quiet work around the house, laundry, organizing the garage, more laundry. He came into our dining room where I was enjoying a refreshing adult beverage and working on this very book. It was a lazy day. On the back patio to my left, a gathering of birds was devouring the seeds my mom had put out for them that morning. My dad pulled the earphones off my head. You good if I run over to Brian's to see his new bike? He asked me. Yep, I said, not really listening. At the age of 23, I stayed home alone quite often. Sounds reasonable, right? And yet, people always reacted with surprise when they learned that I wasn't constantly monitored by an able-bodied adult figure. Take my grandfather, for instance, who thought my mom was joking when she first told him that some days during college, I just hung out at the house alone if I didn't have classes. As long as I had my phone and some food within reach, I was perfectly content. As long as I moderated my beverage intake and avoided IMAX films about beavers, I could hold my pee for days, so that was not an issue. Still, my grandfather grumbled that I should have someone with me. In his mind, leaving a person with a disability alone was absurd, since his mind blended all disabilities together into a big jumble of helplessness. With the right adaptations, I can be just as independent as anyone else, which is really important for me. The constant reliance on other people throughout my life has created in me a fear that I'm a burden. I occasionally feel guilty when asking for help, and the feeling can become pretty intense if I know I'm interrupting someone's schedule or activity by asking for their assistance. I can get irritated if my mom so much as interrupts my Netflix movie to ask how to turn off her Bluetooth so I can only imagine what my family members must feel when their daily lives are routinely interrupted by my round-the-clock care, lifting me, feeding me, showering me, etc. Because of this burden complex, I look for every possible way to increase my independence and reduce how often I need to involve others in my care. I've been staying home alone since I was about 14, and it has never once been an issue. So my dad left the room to get ready, and I returned to my work. A few minutes later, I saw a figure walking slowly up the porch toward our back door. What the hell? Nobody uses our back door except me and occasionally my brother, but he was three hours away at college. There was a knock, followed shortly by the doorbell, which we installed years ago so I could get my parents' attention when I was playing outside. I couldn't physically turn my head far enough to see who it was through the glass back door. Uh, Dad? Someone is at the back door? I said, hoping he hadn't left for Brian's yet. Who in the world? said Dad as he returned to the dining room and opened the back door. Hey, can I help you? The man's voice was old, but gentle. May I come in? My dad hesitated but then opened the door wider. Sure, everything okay? The man didn't answer, but walked into our dining room, past my dad, and into my field of vision. His steps were slow, almost like he was deliberately taking his time. He stopped a few feet into the room and turned his head to look down at me. He was tall, with sleek white hair and expensive clothing, dress pants, dockers, plaid button-up, and a black suit jacket.